Hello, guys. My hair, yes, it's different. It's um a little bit more pumpkin-y than I wanted. I was hoping for kind of a rose color or peachy rose. Um, it is not quite, it's kind of this filter might be doing something, but um, it feels fall. And I have another bottle of it, so it's going to be around for a while. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. I found a, um, I actually was watching another TikToker and she mentioned um, good dye young as being really like stays with you because the last color I really liked it, but literally two washes and my hair was white again. So I was looking for another hair color. It wasn't exactly what I wanted, but it's always fun to try new colors. But no, it's very, um, Pumpkin spice. Thank you. And I'll probably try pink again and purple and all that stuff. Thank you. Hey, Mary Cat. How's everybody's week been? Thank you. Thank you for the compliments. And you will be seeing it all the time for the next couple months because I have another bottle, so. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. It wasn't, it was called something weird, like Du Hast, <laughs> which didn't really tell you what color it was gonna be, but it very much showed a little bit more peachy, I would say, a little bit more rose goldy kind of thing. Only three more days of retrograde, yes, yes. And that's kind of gonna be our theme for tonight is um, we got a lot of retrogrades coming to an end. I think the Jupiter one did. Oh, my visit? I'll get into that in a second. But um, for tonight's theme, I was just going to kind of do insight and so that we're making sure that we're getting the most at the end of this retrograde, that we're paying attention to how all these things are affecting us internally so we can make those changes and um, everything. So I got some crystals for that. Actually, all blue stones. And I did go to the fair. It was interesting. Um, <laughs> I ate a lot of really fatty food. Um, I went in the zipper and got way too shooken up um, immediately and then went on a couple other rides just because I had spent the money on them. But the zipper was kind of, my whole family was like, yeah, 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 let's do a ride. And then we all got on that and all of us were sick getting off. So Saturn just went direct. Yeah, see, they were coming to an end of a couple of them. Healing. Oh, goodness. Oh, thank you so much. And happy that everybody gets to be here. The fair rides. I love rides, but these are like janky old rides, so um, they were they shook me up too much, way too much. Um, but normally I love like roller coasters, and I just started. I haven't even done a smoke cleanse, so actually I'm gonna use. Yeah, it does. And I've been on like rides recently. Like we went to not this not during COVID, but right before COVID, we went to Disney and Universal Studios. And we went on like 20 rides in one day. We just went bam bam bam. So usually I'm pretty good, but one ride that killed me. There's some Palo Santo here, so I'm gonna use this. I don't really use it too often, but I've literally had this stick for like two years. Thank you so much for all the compliments on my hair. It's jewelry merch yeah right i need to buy some more jewelry you guys see like the same four pieces of jewelry <laughs> Should I let that burn a little more? yes the spinning rides like um the gravitron oh my god just looking at that and teacups Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, I did. I tried to match this. It looks, eh, as much as I have. It's as closest as I have. Hey, Michigan. Oops, I missed something. Hey, Brianna. Good to see you. I'm glad you guys are here. I'm glad you enjoy the ride. Thank you, Fatches. 
spin you sick. What's funny is the Gravitron when I was younger was like my favorite. And then there's just, I hit like age 12 and that was it. It gives me like a migraine. Look at that, kind of through. Yes, and so I did not go live on Sunday. I came back, um, cause it's a three hour ride. So I got back here around eight o'clock and I sat down on the couch and slowly started to pass out. I was like dead asleep at 9.30 last Sunday. Yeah, I did have a good time. It's a good time. My, um, not to be a downer, but my stepmom has cancer, and so she came out to kind of, um, it's not good. And so she came out to kind of do, like, visit with people and see the foliage and things that she wants to do. So it was good for her to, you know, have everybody at the fair. Thank you. Any tips for sleep? I actually, the thing that I did in the last few years is to keep a regular bedtime. I know that that sounds kind of terrible, but and it's hard to do, but it has helped my um, sleep so much. So I'm like in bed at 10.30, like I barely ever stay past like 11.30. And just having a regular bedtime really helps. And CBD, meditation before bed, stuff like that. I'm gonna bring that through. Yeah, the sound baths for sleeping, that's a great idea. Amethyst and halite in bed, I love it. Yeah, all of my videos on YouTube, I usually talk for about five minutes in the beginning to describe the intention for the session and talk about the stones. And then I'm usually quiet unless it's a guided meditation. And almost all of my videos on here are no talking too. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's good. She's doing the things that she wanted to. Thank you so much for all this. The hair compliments. Alright, I'm gonna put that right there. I'm gonna turn that down too. So you get a little crazy. I do have guided meditations on my YouTube, which is the link is in the bio. And if you join my Patreon, I just did another guided meditation. I uploaded the October one. Um, that's about meeting your spirit guides. So, yes, I do a few. They're a little bit more time intensive, so I don't do them every week. Thank you. I'm just gonna brush through for a second and then I have some stones we'll use. Hey Kelly, sorry I missed some of you coming in. Oh, that sounds lovely. I don't have any of that. I don't even know how to say that, Brianna. I was making my Christmas list for my mom today and like it's half crystals. Thank you so much. Um, who taught you how to heal? I did um, some Reiki classes, some through Udemy and some through a friend. And then honestly, there's just kind of free um, Reiki attunements on YouTube and sometimes I watch those just because I find the the meditation really relaxing, so I don't know if that juices me up some. How would you cope with hypersensitivity that leads to anger? Well, definitely, I'm not a therapist, so I don't want to be the only one to talk on something like that, but just from an energy perspective, what's triggering you? Like, what is the things that, you know, lead you to be out of control and start to address those and shadow work? And also just through therapy. I'm, I'm not a therapist. So. They can definitely lend more insight into that. Like sure, have Reiki in conjunction with that, but therapy is 
Therapy's cool. I love the sparkles and the heart and the moon that you keep doing that way. I wish that I could put the sparkle emoji on like literally everything. Like I want everything to have those little sparkle stars. Yeah, and, and Ricky can totally be a great release, but not the only. In compliment, I guess. You think I live in Orlando? I live very, very far away from Orlando. On um, myself, I don't know, like four years, five years, something like that. Doing this, like here, since February, so not long. Yeah, sparkles everywhere. Okay. So some of the stones I've got, I'll go through them all that we're gonna use. So I have celestite, and so that's just kind of so that we can see clearly what's going on, assess that better. And then I have some blue kyanite, which I really love to just kind of going deeper and seeing, you know, intuition, insight, what's going on. And then I have some lapis, which kind of feels like it connects you to your own personal story, like what your ancestors and your family and your purpose kind of, and in a protective way, like kind of armors you up in that knowing of who you're gonna be. Um, so I'm gonna use that. And those are just kind of to deal with coming out of the retrograde and dealing with our shit. So insight is today's intention and, and more like um, internal insight, intuition to what's going on with us. I'm gonna start with that. That's awesome, I'm glad. Yeah, it's been a really strange week for me. I've had so many weird, not bad technical issues, but just really odd ones. <laughs> Like, I was in this room the other day, and my husband's iPad turned on and started playing a YouTube on multiple dimensions or multiple realities. And I was like, um... <laughs> and I've had so many things like that in the last week. So it's, it's definitely been... Yeah, people have been talking about their dreams being crazy. It's been a weird one. But not in a bad way. Yeah, a lot of internet issues. I prefer slower hand movements too, personally, so. And everybody has their thing. In your root dreams. Did I buy anything used? I don't think so. I love that I called in your angels for protection. I should remember to do that at night. I usually like if I have a scary dream, I'm just like petrified, frozen, like I can't even move. That's such a good idea. Don't the internet issues have to do with solar flares? Oh, maybe. I have an app on my phone that tells me, like gives me alerts about solar activity. Not that I know what any of it means, but it's just kind of interesting to like pay attention to those notifications and see how they affect things. Every time I watch you, my sinuses pop. That's interesting. I get that kind of feeling when I'm working on people, like this kind of popping and moving sensations. I'm gonna pull this one through, kind of cleansing away what's keeping us clouded vision, I guess. 
whatever's getting in the way of us seeing clearly. Maybe is that a better way to say that? Oh, that's interesting. Awesome, I'm glad those, I took me a little while to send them out, sorry. But I'm glad. I keep meaning to put them on my store too. I am so behind. But I'm trying very hard to um, leave my job and do this full time. So hopefully in the next two to three weeks I'll have some more time. Yes, less tight. Thank you. Oh, Kelly, you can have any of my mods can have a sticker. Just um, DM me your address. I'll send you one. Um, um, yes, but if I do more lives, they would be at an off. Like, I do these at 9 p.m., which is good, but I know that some people can't tune in at a 9 p.m. time, so I probably would do something um, at a different time, like earlier or something. I think that also can mean just more during the day lives, like, you know, more casual kind of thing, too. Yes, definitely. Any of my mods, you go ahead and um, DM me your address and I'll shoot one in the mail. Because thank you for your work. Um, I really like Celestite for really just, like, clear third eye work. Um, it feels like it's cleansing yet in a nice way. The way that I would use amethyst on the crown, I use celeste on the third eye. And for me, it's not so much about like blue kyanite is more about going deeper or um, the other ones are more sparkly. This one just feels like Windex. <laughs> Windex for your third eye is what it feels like to me. Yeah, gentle. It's not like blowing your third eye open. Um, third eye gets kind of used in a lot of weird ways, so it's, it's, it kind of can vary, but basically it's supposed to be how you sense and perceive, and not only that, but what you do with those senses, the narrative that you make about what's going on there. Um, so it's that very human, consciousness thing but taking it higher if possible and not just about like your magical abilities I think sometimes it gets pigeonholed in that way where it's much more like human perception and the stories we tell about those perceptions I think it's important to remember that we have control there like that's part of our abilities we can change how we perceive an event we can change our mind But being in touch with your third eye lends itself to kind of more magical or spiritual abilities. Um, so I'm going to use some blue kyanite. I really like this one for just kind of going deeper into the subconscious, going into um, your deeper self. So kind of scraping away superficial, superficial stuff. Thank you. Yeah, I was trying very hard to match them to my hair, but I don't really quite have that color. I actually don't know what an indigo child is. I've seen that term before, but I have no idea what that means. So probably not.
Hi. How did you know this was your calling? Um, I put a video on the internet and everybody was like, oh my god, that was really great. And so I keep putting them on the internet and everybody's like, oh my god, that's really great. And I was like, I should probably keep doing that. So you guys showed me this. Thank you. Indigo child equals light worker. I guess so. Is this like healer? Energy healer? It's like a term I like, I guess. Hey, Alchemist Kennedy. I watch your lives too. I think it was last night or the night before. Whenever you were alive last, I watched that. Just great. You had like a solid night wand. Um, in my bio is a link to make a private session appointment, and um, my YouTube channel is over there. I have a store and I sell candles, which I'm mostly caught up on. I am very close to caught up. An indigo child is a child that has some type of unique, unusual, or supernatural ability. I think we all have supernatural abilities, we just need to remember them. Um, so I don't like, I don't really love terms that set people apart. I think that this is all of our callings if we're just open to it. I'm so proud of me for catching up. I have like a few orders that have come in this week and like two from last week. So that is... Yeah, just I think we're all that way if we let ourselves be. I think well, some of us may wake up earlier, but I feel like everybody is mm, special. They just need to find it. <clears throat> Sacred space is my favorite and I didn't really like patchouli, I thought, until I got that and I love it. Um, I don't see auras as um, colors, like some people like see them with their eyes open, I don't really see that. I know that there's like hope medium or hope healing arts on um, TikTok, she reads auras. And I only can get those photographs. When I do a private session with somebody and I'm trying to look at their energetic body and understand things, I see imagery, like it might show up as a tree, I might see it um, as a lighthouse, I might, I see things and then I know something about it. Whew. You want me to remember them? By <laughs> I know it's patchouli because that's the one that I didn't think I'd like. I think it's lavender patchouli. There's something woody in there too. Because mm, there's four. I think there might be just a teeny bit of citrus. And then, no, the patchouli must be the woody scent. I think lavender, patchouli, cardamom. Cardamom, yes. I saw for you. Huh. No, not at this moment. Hmm. 
I have one of those brains that like, I feel really bad, but as soon as like something is out of sight, it's out of my mind. So I'm a big journal person. Um, so I probably wrote down a note, hopefully. I think that's that ADHD brain thing. That happens to me too. <laughs> that's why I always feel really bad. I'll be like, yeah, I read that book. And then somebody will be like, oh yeah, what was it about? I, I don't know. It does make movie watching really great because I can watch a movie a second time and like, don't remember a thing. I might remember who I hate. Like, oh, that lady's a bitch. But I don't know why. <laughs> Object permanence, yeah. Out of sight, out of mind. I see most people's energy as a tree. Um, where definitely, like, people actually, literally, your root is a set of roots and then kind of like a seed belly. And then um, the heart is where it starts to be into a green, like, unflowering kind of tree thing. New details on every rewatch, yes. What's my favorite crystal? Um, I have many that I like. Um, I usually, I probably would say the ones that I like to keep. Well, the ham, rhodochrosite, is one of my favorite crystals, even though I don't carry that one. Um, Ruby is one of my favorites to carry. I have some black moonstone I've been really loving. But there's too many, I don't know. Oh, that's amazing. A baseball bat? I'm just kidding. If you're looking for a stone, I hope that you have other protections in place too because men are not to be trusted. No offense, but... Too many women end up strangled, so um, definitely take yourself more seriously. Your safety is important. Crystals are great for your your energetic well-being, but definitely, I mean, like you can always throw a really heavy rock that you can throw at his head. That's what I suggest. It's my boss. I like black tourmaline. It feels very protective and I like literally can scrape myself. I use it to scrape myself off a lot um, and try to just clear the junk. I call his wife. The new job. Yeah, ham is a heavy one. My pyrite is probably my heaviest crystal. That one's like a brick. Brick. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 40. I'm going to actually be 41 next month. I'm a Sagittarius. I would then, if I would, um, my protection would be using crystals to then enchant for the future that I want. Um, offense is the best defense, so, you know, maybe some lucky stones or something that kind of inspires you to shine so you can get the next job and leave him in the dust, I guess, is my best suggestion. Don't focus on what's behind you. Call in what's next. <laughs> I 
Uh, this is blue kyanite, and usually comes in these little bladed pieces. Um, and usually pretty inexpensive for a little blade of it. And the last one I was going to do use is lapis. And again, this one I feel like is really good for connecting to your personal storyline of who you are and what that means in the greater span of the cosmos and using that inner knowing to as armor against everything that's stressing you out knowing who you are so deeply that you can't be affected by the world so we're looking for that level of insight from this um, as we move out the end of the retrograde I love ocean jasper. It is literally the prettiest stone. Every piece is so pretty. Yeah, it's really easy to figure out where, like, how full the moon was at your birth. And sometimes you can tell just by where they are in like so i have a sagittarius sun and gemini moon which is opposite which means the, the moon must have been close to full because it was opposite sign so you can kind of figure it out that way like if there was a sagittarius sun and a sagittarius moon then we'd know that it was a new moon when that happened because they would be in the same sign <clears throat> so you might even be able to figure it out just from knowing your sun to your moon sign. I know a lot of Gemini moons. It's funny, like a lot of people that I know through the internet are Gemini moons. Oh, happy birthday. Scorpio moon, Scorpio sun. So the moon was close to new at that point because they were in the same sign. So... And it won't be exact. You can look at a website to know exactly which way it was. But, um... Leo, Sun, and Moon. Okay. So that's cool. There's a new moon, too. I like seeing everybody's signs. It'll be a large McDonald's french fry for Halloween. That's awesome. I love that. I haven't, I don't even have a costume. My kids aren't old enough and I don't think I'm invited to any cool parties. Everything just kind of feels dead. So I don't even have a place to wear a costume. Medusa. Ooh, I like that. Did someone just asked me. I missed that. I lost a pet today. What do you think happens to pets when they pass? I think the same thing that happens to everything else. It comes around again like in some sort of way. Maybe it changes. Maybe it's not going to be a pet again in the next life. But I feel like we're constantly recycled through timelines, through space, through all that crazy stuff to just experience things again and again. And I think that we often run into people we've known in past experiences. But I don't necessarily believe it all happens within this particular timeline, reality, dimension, whatever you want to call it. I feel like they're open. There's many of them and we can kind of go between them. So. <laughs> That's quite the question. Do you think we are significant or insignificant and I think that our insignificance is significant if we want it to be and that's the point like we are nothing except for what we make ourselves we give it we give it the meaning so I think that it's important for ours to do that <clears throat> but I'm just also I'm just a lady on the internet like 
<laughs> don't necessarily listen to me. Like, believe your um, own things, too. What was that? We're doing a costume party at the barn. My horse having a Oh, I love that. That's going to be so pretty. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm not an astrologer, um, so I have a really hard time with transits and how what's ever happening currently will affect your natal chart. Um, I just bought a planner, a honeycomb planner, where it shows all, like, it's like a planner and it shows my personal transits day to day. And that's my goal for the next year, to kind of understand what that means a little bit more. Even if our skin, our gods look different, are we evolved? All human life is significant. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a lady on the internet. <laughs> oh, that sounds fun. I really am sad that my kids are too old for trick or treating. It was probably my favorite thing. And I'd usually dress up, but I wouldn't necessarily plan the costumes. It would be something I would do last minute. I'd be like, oh, what do I have? Can I be a witch? Can I be... One year I was a construction worker, so I put my hair up in a construction hat and I did my makeup. And I really, really looked like a man. I was so impressed. You're never too old. Well, I think that they would feel weird if a bunch of, like, <laughs> adults showed up. I don't feel like... There should be adult trick-or-treating. Why isn't that allowed? Because I believe that too. You're never too old for trick or treating. Yeah, oh, I went into high school. Yeah, for sure. I really, yeah, so now our family at this point, we just buy like a bowl full of candy for ourselves and then we watch a like scary movie or creepy movie or something. I think we watched Donnie Darko last year because my kids hadn't seen it. I love that movie. It's not super scary, but it's cool. A bottle of booze and snack candy. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely. There was one house, like when my kids were trick-or-treating, we'd go to Stowe um, because it's like a rich town. And uh, there was one house and they would always have hot cider and um, donuts for all the parents, like everybody. It was amazing. Those people are kings. A balloon animal for Halloween. Oh, that's so funny. I'm in Vermont, not Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah, Stranger Things is good. We always watch um, Over the Garden Wall. That's like our Halloween um, family show, I guess, that we watch every year. I haven't been to Salem since I was, like, actually a little girl. It's funny. It was probably, like, eight or nine, and I went there with my mom and her friend, and we listened to Kate Bush the whole way down, and then we went to Salem all day, and I got, like, a cush and crystals, and it was literally, like, the best day of my life and probably cemented me as a witch forever. Yes, over the garden wall fans, right? Potatoes and molasses. I just love how the songs are stuck in my head. Ain't that the way? And there's rock facts. I mean, how could you not love a cartoon with rock facts? I mean, come on. 
Oh, you watch it for Thanksgiving? That's nice. I heard about the trunk or treats. My kids are, um, I guess they were too old by the time those started coming around or we didn't have them here until like a couple years ago. It was the first time I'd heard about them and then it was not for, um... <laughs> I think we need a sticker, I'm just a lady on the internet. Yes. And I feel like a lot more people need to acknowledge that the people you see on TikTok are just people. They're just, they're just people. We shouldn't listen to them all the time. Sometimes, for sure. I learned so many things, but they're all, we're all just people. <clears throat> I live one hour from Salem, and my great 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 grandmother was accused of being a witch, Rebecca Nurse. Yeah, I have um, a grandfather that was he was a, accused, and but he never made it to trial. He died in the um, the prison that they held him in. She had a weird name too, now I don't remember it. Doctor something something. But he was he was just like a folk doctor. He wasn't like And he said he hunted witches. I don't know why they got them confused. He was supposed to be super Christian. Oh, I think it's Dr. Tooth Haker. Like Tooth and then Acre. I can't remember his last first name though. Um, my family, like on my mom's side, is like old New England family. So they were all over the place. In Massachusetts, way up in northern Maine. It was really fun to do my um, family tree or whatever. I did that during COVID. That was one of those COVID hobby hobbies I picked up. A swamp witch. <laughs> I love that. Um, I I signed up for the ancestry thing. I know that's like the super white lady thing to do, um, but then it was pretty fun, <laughs> and I spent like over time, like a couple months, going back. Um, I can trace my family on one side back to Charlemagne, so that was really cool. I have a saint in there, some princesses. A bunch of Norwegian Vikings, I'm sure. Okay, some rotocrosite. And we'll finish up with that, and I'll probably do some plucking on my time. Yeah. And plucking and pulling and kind of brushing. So this one is just heart healing, kind of putting us in our bodies, remembering what we're doing, the work that we're doing, and why. It's really good. And as everyone calls it, ham. And once you get into Ancestry.com, like, just use their free trial at least. You start to get names, and then you can get connected because in um, a lot of European countries, it's open information. So if you can find one of your ancestors on one of their websites, then you can um, just use the free information there to go through the family tree that's already there. So um, that was, I think, I have a lot of family in the Netherlands. And theirs was almost all for free on their website. What is the meaning of modern day witch? Which is a very, very loose term. And each person is going to identify with that word in a different way. Um, it's easier to just ask, like, it's just basically saying you're spiritual or you're pagan. Um, there's a lot of different words. To me, which means somebody that's going to honor their own intuition, go their own way about things, and um, probably work with different kinds of cycles, moon cycles, seasonal cycles, and honor them, and looks to kind of interact or commune with the nature. A lot of witches are usually animus to me, where they know, like, everything is alive. But then outside of that, some of them are secular, some of them um, 
work with deities. Hey, Erica. Um, my pronouns are she, they. Yeah, so I'm eclectic, solitary. Everybody's going to have a very different um, definition of what they are and why. So just ask them to elaborate more. What does that mean to you? It's a really great question. Yeah, this one is usually very tingly for people. So, um, which is why I bring it out in literally every single live. And it, yeah, and so it depends on the witch. Some people are eclectic witch, green witch, kitchen witch, moon witch. I mean, you literally can make up any different name. Times 57. Um, this is a petrified shark tooth. I got it from um, Bone Dust Tower. Actually, my husband bought it from Bone Dust Tower. Henge Witch, yes. And some people might be more like Celtic witchcraft or Nordic witchcraft or work with Greek deities or Egyptian deities or um, all kinds of stuff. Hedge witch, as far as I understand it, is hedge riding, meaning kind of doing things like, um, like astral travel, kind of like flying on a broomstick over the hedge, kind of journeying, but maybe I'm wrong. Who is it that said hedge witch? Do you have a good definition of that? To me, that kind of means like they're going to be dealing with psychedelics, but I could be wrong. A music witch, yes. I know that there's some um, that do um, like glamour and fashion and kind of like making their appearance. Yeah, there we go. Travels in between spaces, that, that kind of liminal hedge riding thing. I'm glad it gave you that connection. Shamanic things. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I'd be very into that kind of thing, witchcraft. I'm gonna make like the little bubble. Any tips on staying mindful while super busy and stressed? Um, don't make it a job. Like, take it in small chunks. Like, find one thing a day to do very mindfully. Eating, embodied movement, and once you have that one thing down, then you can be more present, you know, start to work that into other places during your day. So, if you have a certain thing that you like to do, like work or creating, be like, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna totally just be present for it and enjoy it. Breathing breaks. I like that. Okay, so I was I was kind of correct. That hedge riding thing. Okay, plant allies. Kitchen witch, green witch. 
吐一口。You almost missed it. Yeah, I'm probably here another like ten minutes or so. Hey, Red, how are you doing? I'm I'm on to ham, so you missed most of it. And I was gonna do some brushing and、um, plucking, but you made it for ham, so. May he be praised. Though I, I definitely feel this is kind of feminine still. If I had to give, if I had to gender this rock, I would go feminine. I think when you're talking about different kinds of witchcraft, and you're thinking about what you want to be like, what do you want to weave your intention into? Some people like to cook, and they can、um, honor their family with gratitude and、um, blessings, health, protection. And so, as they're cooking, they can add those ingredients and add those intentions and make a spell of it. So it's、um, a way of how do you want to put your magic out into the world? What do you want to do with it? Green witchcraft is usually、um, having plant allies, understanding. How plants communicate, trying to communicate with them, using them in different intentional ways. You might do spell jars with herbs that you grew, or、um, use herbs that you grew to smoke cleanse things like that,、um, or just medicinally. So you'd probably be an herbalist. So there's a lot of different ways. And with music, people are talking about how、um, it's a beautiful way to express your magic through singing. And、um, listening to music and how that you know affects your body and your mood and how can you dance to your intentions,、um, so that kind of thing. Like for example, I think I just put up a thing about sigils. I really like art in my magic,、um, so I feel like I'm able to express and flow into that intentional state by doing watercolors and designing little sigils. So. <clears throat> I'm going to do some pulling and like aura brushing and plucking. Okay, to close out. What about with animals or the ocean? You can literally be whatever you want. I don't know. So you have my. I will give you the permission slip to do magic in whatever way you want, except for don't be harmful to others, I guess. But um, yeah. You can do magic however you want. Sigils and candle magic are probably the two, and that and、um, right before bed, I use that kind of state that your brain is in to do journey work or kind of things like that, which I guess would be a little bit more hedge witchy, so kind of journeys,、um, astral kind of stuff, and then I like certain plant allies. Um, a few times a year to do that a little bit deeper. <clears throat> also, things like、um, like when I was studying Norse witchcraft, satyr,、um, where some people are shaking or entering trance states, those are pretty cool too. So I've been followed by a particular masculine clone scent. Ooh, that's interesting. I wonder if that's like kind of an ancestor or guide. You'd be afraid of messing up. Oh, I see what you're saying. I mean, you could do it wrong, but that's kind of part of the learning process. Like, I feel you'll learn a lesson in that way. I mean, I've made mistakes, and I kind of I learned something, I guess. Yeah, your heart's intention is the key. It really is. Like, especially if you're coming from this place of wonder and awe, and you want to create this connection with the universe, you want to grow. You know, kind of something that is meaningful to you. I don't think that you're gonna get demons or you know possessed or anything really crazy. You might bump your toe. You're definitely gonna make mistakes. I think just learning how magic works is part of the process, because it doesn't always work out like you think it is. You'll definitely learn lessons. <clears throat> 
Um, then start with just learning protection magic. You know, how can you feel more guarded and safe so that you can maybe reach out to spirit guides so they can help guide you. Work with spirits and guides that are known to be helpful in starting your practice, that kind of thing. But there's going to be a point of self-initiation, you know, during the way. And that is, you know, just kind of what happens. So use, use some kind of divination. <clears throat> well, that's tarot or runes or, you know, reading tea leaves. <clears throat> and you absolutely can, you know, have entities around you. Or sometimes what I think is more accurate is not that you brought an entity into your home. It's more that you are seeing clearly an entity that was probably already there. But you now have the tools to maybe help in that situation to move them on to some other place maybe work with a deity or god to get them where they need to be you know shuffle them along set up boundaries so it's not necessarily that you're drawing them in so much as maybe you're seeing something you never saw before And definitely learn some meditation, learn grounding, learn protection, those kind of things. If you're worried, start out with those. There's an entity in my house. Yeah, for sure. That's what we've been dealing with here for quite a while in my home. And I think we're making some progress. So. Some of it is just learning who they are and what they need. Oh, did I just lose you guys? We like our resident ghost. Yeah, oops, let me start that over. Yeah, I think it like popped up a notification and froze it. Sorry. Five more minutes. <laughs> my ghost did it. No, it was actually my low battery and I can't plug it in. I kind of knew that was going to happen. I left my battery, my phone charger at work. But we're good. It was just 20%. I totally got it. Oh no, she's very loud. Oh, she's very loud. It's just taken us a while to um, understand what she needs and who she was. She's been showing up for a few years. It's just, it's kind of, we've slowly put it all together. Like, oh, I see. I see what's going on. So, um, we've done a couple of rituals to kind of make contact with her and that's felt really helpful. And she literally, um, so I, I came up with kind of a ritual and then I printed out like the prayer that we were going to use and the kind of summoning and summoning and offering stuff and I printed it out at work and then I left for the weekend and we did the ritual and it was great and we had a really it felt like powerful experience understanding what was going on with her and then I went back to work the next week and the printer started printing out the same ritual again like three or four copies I had to turn it off but people were there in between why did it wait until I got there to start printing those copies off I was like so she has been very loud um, so I would not be surprised Can you show what to do for protection? Protection magic is a very big and broad category. Definitely, I think Brianna was just talking about um, cleansing your spaces, especially your um, doors and windows, making sure that that's an intentional thing that you're doing. You're like saying, I'm gonna smoke cleanse, I'm gonna wipe down everything with peppermint oils, I'm going to cleanse my space and protect it. So doing more of those activities intentionally is a good start. 
especially in your home and like where you sleep. Maybe I'm gonna vacuum under my bed as a way to remove any stuff. You know, you can just do literal housework and make it intentional. Cinnamon essential oil before sweeping my altar space, yes. Sage cleansing or any incense cleansing. Yeah. A broom, yeah. Time is 10. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the time check. Um, I will probably get off. Sorry, I was going a little longer talking. Um, I just uploaded the paternal energy to my YouTube channel. Check that out if you're a patron. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. You have led me, you've given me that hope of being able to quit my job. And so that has been so lovely. And I just uploaded the guided meditation for um, connecting with your spirit guides. If you're a moderator, thank you so much. Let me know your address and I'll send you a sticker. Just DM me your address and I can send that out probably next week. Um, and I'd love to do that. And thank you guys so much for all your gifts and your attention and your time and your compliments for my hair. I appreciate you all so very much and there'll be videos and thank you. Have a good night and I'll see you on Sunday for sure. Okay. Thank you guys.